nông protein đồng bọn Aziz bàn chlong cắt rô lô cầm đáy cơ đáy khẳng The time at the moment is the beginning of May and Southeast Asia is enduring a brutal record-setting heat wave. Temperature have reached 100 to 120 degrees, closing schools, taxing power grids, and increasing heat-related illnesses and death. But it's not just Southeast Asia. Many parts of Asia are enduring this problem right now. We have regions like Bangladesh, where temperatures rose to 43 degrees Celsius and almost 44 degrees Celsius. We have regions like Cambodia, the country that I am in, with temperatures being around 43 degrees Celsius, and region from India, whereby they are facing their longest April heat wave ever, with some places in India reaching as high as 46 degrees Celsius. Japan, Laos, Thailand, Myanmar, and the Philippines with temperatures about 53 degrees Celsius in some areas. The heat wave has been brutal. You see, after reading all of those articles, it almost seems that heat waves are the new norm in Asia. Now, as I was saying, because we are experiencing this extreme heat event, and with so many articles coming out, it feels as if as time progresses, the weather will just keep getting hotter from year to year. So as a concerned individual, I just went on Google and did a lot of research on these extreme heat events. And it turns out there is a term used to describe this kind of event and there are patterns of this event happening not only to Asia regions but other regions last year and decades ago as well. It turns out it is called El Nino. Now I'm sorry if I can't pronounce the name of it correctly but in my term I call it El Nino. Apparently the term El Nino, Spanish for the Christ child, refers to a warming of the ocean surface or above average sea surface temperatures in the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. El Nino recurs in regularly from two years to a decade and no two events are exactly aligned. And the opposite of El Nino is La Nina which is the periodic cooling of sea surface temperatures across the east central equatorial pacific. So from this I learned that oh it is an event that happens for very irregularly. It can be two years, it can be a decade and between each event there is no similarity so it means that one event can be hotter than the other and one can be a bit cooler than the other but the terminology is called El Nino and it has been happening for so many times since it was recorded. Consequently, after doing all of this research, I sort of reflect back because initially when I experienced all of this extreme heat along with friends, the first thing that I blame and a lot of us blame is the climate change, the global warming situation, which is definitely is happening, don't get me wrong. But it seems that it is not the entire truth, especially to the causation of El Nino. Based on my research, it seems that there is no definite conclusion that a strong El Nino or global heating is caused by climate change, although recent studies suggest otherwise. But of course, in my opinion, we still need to be aware of our actions against the climate and the causing of global warming. But knowing all of that fact, in a way, sort of brought me sense of relief where the world is not going to end because I genuinely thought that next two years the weather can be very hot. In the Philippines, there is news that the temperature there was 53 degrees Celsius. What if next year it becomes 54, or next decade it becomes 55 or 56? We don't know what is going to happen to the world and that is sort of my concerns. As a result, yeah, I was relieved to know that this event El Nino as well as La Nino have been happening from different years in intervals, but it's very irregular and both events are different. And it has been recorded for nearly 100 years with each event producing different results and some events are more catastrophic causing danger to many than others. And during this time living in this extreme heat and after doing a lot of research, I also came across many articles last year, summer in the UK, in many parts of Europe, as well as South Korea. There are so many places last year they were getting hit with heat wave and to some region they are also experiencing record breaking heat wave as well and there were danger in the heat wave so it means that this sort of event is bound to happen we can't really stop it but what we can do is to make sure we stay safe ourselves and also to be aware of our actions against global environment as well as climate change and yeah that is basically my opinion to what this entire situation that is happening, extreme heat events. I hope that you guys learned something from it, from today's video. Also, if you are living in regions like myself, in Southeast Asia or in Cambodia like me, 
I hope you are doing your best to protect yourself from the heat, do not suffer the heat stroke because I know in Cambodia heat waves is not really a massive issue because we always have quite hot summer but it's just very hot this year so that is very concerning. It also hasn't rained for quite a long time as well so I hope that you are doing your best to protect yourself if you have to go to work outside, try to protect yourself from the sun and stay in the shade as much as possible. And if any part of my research is not fully correct, feel free to write it down in the comment below. Uh, I would really appreciate it. Uh, and yeah, hopefully you guys learned something from this video and I will see you all in the next one. Thanks, goodbye and peace.